Hi everyone, Knupsi here, and students across the globe are heading back to school or are already currently in school at this time. And iOS 11 is also dropping very soon for the public. So I want to see how iOS 11 on the iPad Pro actually works for college students like myself. So in this video, let's find out. So I have the 2016 12.9 inch iPad Pro and it still performs very well on iOS 11. Things open fast, apps have no delay really at all, and it's still a great overall performer. Basically the 2016 version is still a great overall iPad, so if you want to save a bit of cash over the 2017 version, it's still a great option. If you're buying an iPad to use as a productivity machine or even a light productivity machine, you need to get a smart keyboard case for sure. Either the Apple one or the Logitech one, but you just, you just need one. The key travel on the Apple keyboard is very low, but is way more satisfying than using just a touch screen for typing. Plus you have a whole bunch of desktop commands available with this keyboard. The Apple Pencil is less necessary, but a good tool if you want to sort of use it as a mouse replacement or as a precise drawing tool or writing tool. However, you can't use the Apple Pencil for everything when you're swiping around, but for drawing and writing though, there's really not a better option available for an iPad than this. But besides the hardware itself and the accessories, iOS 11 is the main key point to make the iPad Pro into a more productivity focused machine. Besides doing actual work, I use the iPad a lot for watching videos, as do many other people. I browse the web, I get through emails, I use Twitter, and stuff that I do on my phone except on a bigger screen. The main big thing in iOS 11 is definitely multitasking. You can have two windows in split screen, one floating window, and one picture in picture video all running at the exact same time. Some apps still don't support split screen for some really strange reason, but you can still use a floating app window over top of them for brief use, but it's not really an ideal situation. I'm also a really big fan of the new dock. I really want to have all my applications in there, but it's not totally possible you can just have a select few. But what I do have is my main applications I use often in the dock, and the ones I don't use often in folders on the desktop, if you will. The dock makes it way easier to use the iPad than the previous carousel multitasking. Just swipe up and all your apps are basically just right there, so it's very Mac OS like Also very computer-like is drag and drop, which is very well implemented here, but does require two hands if the application isn't open that you're trying to drag it into. You can drag and drop photos, text, or links, so it's very useful and it really improves on the whole dynamic of copying and pasting. Next, the Files app, which I've really come to enjoy. Think of it as a finder or desktop for files that are found both on your iPad's physical storage or off in the cloud somewhere. It's incredibly useful. You can't really do every single thing in the Files app, like for example, there's no on-device photos or notes found in there, but I think it's a really good step in the right direction for a useful file directory on the iPad. Finally, let's talk about apps. For the main core apps for productivity and work, I use Apple's iWork Suite with Keynotes, Pages and Numbers, and just Apple's Notes app as well. Keynote can be a bit weak for touch, especially if you're doing some really intensive, heavy customization, but the other two are great. These apps are very powerful, yet are still very well suited for touch here on the iPad and are incredibly similar to their desktop macOS versions. If your colleagues have Macs or iPads or can access the iCloud online site, the useful group collaboration feature is available here and it's great. It's awesome in Keynote, awesome in Pages, and it's great for really big group projects. If your course requires a lot of drawing or handwritten note-taking, there's a lot of selection available. Apps like Procreate are for hardcore drawing and illustrating, and apps like Sketches are for much lighter overall use cases. For note-taking with the Apple Pencil, Notability works great and is probably the best option here, as it makes it the closest experience to writing on paper. Writing on the iPad is pretty good overall, but the pencil can be a bit slippery on screen, so it doesn't really feel like you're directly writing on paper. If Apple had a rubber tip instead of this plastic one, it would probably feel a bit more natural. Photoshop, Lightroom, and Apple's own photo app can also be pretty good for light image tweaking or adjusting. But it's when you want to do more than just typing, drawing, and light usage, is when the iPad feels a bit weak. A big example of this is video editing. While iMovie and the various other video editing applications are good, there's really no control compared to Final Cut Pro. 
with apps like Graphic from Autodesk, they're very well designed and incredibly similar to Illustrator, except on iOS. But they just want to make me use my Mac with a trackpad or my mouse. It's just a lot easier. You can only do so much on the iPad Pro before it feels like extra work than it needs to be. Okay, so as a summary, the iPad Pro is a solidly designed machine, you need a keyboard for sure, multitasking and drag and drop are well implemented, and the Files app is good, but can definitely still be improved. The iPad Pro is perfect for light tasks, but for heavy productivity, you'll want to use your computer if you have one, and it's a good overall student machine if your course doesn't involve heavy video editing, coding, or graphic design. But the main obstacle for many is the price. Expect to be paying mid-range to high-end laptop prices for this setup. You can get plenty of different PCs, or even Apple's own laptops for the same price or cheaper. The iPad Pro is for really two types of people. The first person already has a much bigger computer setup at home, whether it be a desktop or a laptop, and they want sort of a secondary lighter device for some lighter tasks. And the second person doesn't really want a complex PC for video editing, graphic design, or photo editing. They just want a basic overall computer for email, typing, and all that sort of stuff. And the iPad Pro actually does a pretty good job for those very basic tasks iOS 11 really makes the iPad Pro into a much more productivity focused machine with things like the multitasking update, some application updates, and some of the new gestures. But if your course requires anything more than just basic writing, basic typing, some drawing, and some keynote stuff, you may want to look at a laptop, even the MacBook from Apple. It's about the same price when you have all the accessories added on. And that's pretty much it for this video. Like it if you liked it. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on the iPad versus laptop debate. And thank you for watching.